Hey everybody, we are ready to talk about how we measure our heat. So it's okay to talk about, you know, things getting hot and things getting cold, but how do we actually measure energy? Well, you probably know that we get our energy from food. So that means we get our energy from calories and you'll see that um, on our nutrition labels, you'll see calories, all right? So let's talk about this word calorie and what it actually is, okay? Calorie, and notice this is a lowercase c, so it's a lowercase c-a-o, is the quantity of heat that raises the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree Celsius, okay? Our normal American diets are based off of 2,000 capital C calories. Okay, a capital C calorie is a thousand of these little calories. So they are actually what we call a kcal, a kilocalorie. And a kilocalorie is a thousand of those guys. All right, so it's about a million, a thousand times a thousand of your uh, regular calories. So what they basically did is instead of saying that your snack bites um, is a thousand calories, all right, they cut off the bottom and uh, they ended up saying, you know, they're just a hundred instead. So instead of being a hundred thousand. All right. So, um, when they say that they are a hundred calories, all right. And that's actually a capital C calories. So in the rest of the world, they don't use calories. They use something called a joule. That is the scientific unit. And joule is not like a sparkly diamond or a sapphire or a ruby. It is J-O-U-L-E and is named after a scientist. Okay, so a joule is about a quarter of a calorie. But the conversion factor that we use more often is going to be that one calorie is 4.184 joules. And you'll see this 4.184 pop up a lot. Okay? So um, in class, I have nutrition labels from um, different foods from the 24 countries that I've been to. And you'll see that in different languages and stuff like that, you'll see in the nutrition labels, they'll have kJs. They will have kilojoules, okay, and kilojoules and kilocalories in all of their different things. And um, in class, I would be handing around uh, the cocoa Krispies, which would be from Mexico, and you could see how many kilocalories and kilojoules are in there, but the rest of the world, as you know, uses kilo. All right, so what can we use our energy for? Well, we can use our energy in order to figure out the quantity of heat that's actually going to be measured. And we're going to do this through another physical characteristic called specific heat. So this is going to be a characteristic that we are going to use to identify the different types of substances that we have. Just how we have densities that are unique to everything, and we have melting points and boiling points that are going to be unique to everything. Specific heat is going to be unique to all of your substances also. So specific heat is given the symbol lowercase c, okay? So there is heat, which is Q, and there is specific heat, which is C. Specific has a C in it. So, well, it has two C's in it. So that's the one that gets C. This is the amount of energy required to raise the heat one gram of your substance by one degree Celsius. So you'll see that this looks just like the calorie ones, but for calorie definition, it's one gram of water specifically. Specific heat is of your substance because we're talking about any substance. And the equation that we are going to use for specific heat is Q equals MC delta T. So this means that the amount of energy is going to be determined by taking the mass of the substance, the identity, the specific heat of the substance, and how much you want to change it.
All right, you can rearrange Q equals MC delta T, which I call the MCAT equation because it kind of looks like cat right there. And an MCAT is actually the test that you take in order to go into medical school. You can rearrange this equation and solve for C. Divide both sides by M and delta T, and you get C equals Q over M times delta T. And that those two equations are the same, just solving for either Q or solving for C. Obviously, you can use your algebra in order to solve for M or for delta T also. So we talked a little bit about um, delta T in previous questions or previous um, videos. So we'll get to that in a little bit to refresh your memories. Okay, specific heat is that physical property of a substance. It is measured in these funny units, joules per gram degree Celsius. And it literally gives you the definition of what specific heat is. The amount of energy, which is measured in joules, it takes to heat one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So there's where you see your joules, you see your grams, and you see your degree Celsius. Water has a ridiculously and uncharacteristic high specific heat compared to other nonmetals, whereas metals have a low specific heat. It takes less energy to heat up a metal than it does a nonmetal. Okay, so that's why cities in the summertime are really, really hot because there's metal and concrete and all of that all around. But at the beach, you're going to see all of this water. It's going to cool down. That's why we perspire water. We perspire sweat in order to cool us down. That's why if you were to take a pan like so and you were to heat it up empty on the stove, it would get hot almost instantaneously. But if you put a little bit of water in the pan and then you heated it up, guess what? Okay, this water would be cool for quite a while until it got enough energy to heat up. It takes far more energy to heat up water than it does to heat up your metals. Okay, so how do we measure this? We measure this through a calorimeter, a calorie meter. And a calorimeter is going to use um, kind of like an insulated device in order to figure out how much energy is in there. In class, we make a really easy one out of a styrofoam cup and a beaker so that there is air all throughout it to kind of insulate it. We put a little lid on it and we have a thermometer and we literally measure how much energy and how much it heats and cools your water. All right. So when it comes to these equations, we do have to do a little side calculation, and that is to figure out how much the temperature changed. Delta T, remember delta, the Greek letter, means change. And you've seen that with your change in X and change in Y with your slopes and stuff like that. All right, so you've seen delta before. It is always final minus initial. That means it would be your T2 minus your T1. That way, you will know the correct signage. And what I mean by that is if it is a positive change or a negative change. Positive mean it would absorb that energy and negative mean it would release that energy into the water or the surrounding system. Okay, there are a couple of constants that you don't need to memorize, but be aware of. The specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. If we do this in calories, it is one um, calorie per gram degree Celsius. All right, just so that you know. Ice is going to take less energy to heat up, 2.03, and steam is going to take less energy to heat up. That's why they use water in um, cooling systems in nuclear plants because it takes almost twice as much energy in order to heat up the same amount or same mass of water. Plus, it's readily available. 
All right, so we're going to do a specific heat problem. Please go get your calculator, pause the video, come back, and then we can work on these together because there's very um, there's one tricky part with calculating it. Okay, so go get it. Hey, you're back. All right, so um, here we have our sample specific heat problem. It says the temperature of a piece of copper with a mass of 95.4 grams changes from 25 to 48 degrees Celsius when it absorbs 849 joules of energy. What is the specific heat? All right, so identify your variables. Okay, 95.4 grams is my mass. 25 to 48 degrees Celsius is my delta T. It absorbs 849 joules of energy. Ooh, is that Q or is that C? Well, let's look what it's looking for. What is the specific? Oh, that's going to be my C. So this has to be my Q. Okay, so Q, M, C, and delta T. So my Q is 849 joules. My mass is 95.4 grams. My C is unknown. And my delta T goes from 25 degrees Celsius to 48 degrees Celsius. So if it's TF minus TI, what I'm doing is I'm taking 48 degrees and I'm subtracting 25 degrees. So my delta T is going to be 23 degrees Celsius. Now with that information, I'm going to use my Q equals MC delta T equation. Since I'm solving for C, I'm going to use the equation that's already rearranged to this, C equals Q over M delta T. And I plug in my 849 joules over, and then be very careful here, 95.4 grams times I'm taking my change, 23 degrees Celsius. Now, when I go to put this in my calculator, there's a couple of things you need to be really careful of. I have two denominators. So in the calculator, I can put this in one of two ways to get the right answer. I can do 849 divided by, and then do parentheses, 9. 5.4 times 23 parentheses equals, or I can do 849 divided by 95.4 divided by 23. Remember how when we were doing dimensional analysis and you divide by every denominator, the two Ds, that will end up giving you the right value. Okay, so push pause, try it. You should get a value of point three eight seven joules per gram degree Celsius. All right, and you'll see in our next vi our next slide here, we identify the variables. There's our delta T. We're looking for C. And yes, we have our uh, values right here. 0.387 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, this was copper. So on the back side of your periodic table, you will see that the specific heat is going to be listed. It is 0.385 joules per gram degree Celsius. Well, guess what? That's pretty much the same in my book. So that is how we figure out our specific heat equations.